today on episode number 150. I celebrate 150 episodes by welcoming former guests and members of the Teaching in Higher Ed community to make recommendations. The whole show, it's all recommendations. It's going to be great. Produced by Innovate Learning, maximizing human potential. Welcome to this episode of Teaching in Higher Ed. I'm Bonnie Stahoviak, and this is the space where we explore the art and science of being more effective at facilitating learning. We also share ways to improve our personal productivity so we can have more peace in our lives and be even more present for our students. It's an all recommendations episode to celebrate 150 episodes of Teaching in Higher Ed. I was planning on having my husband, Dave Stahoviak, who's been on the show many times before, join me. And let's just say that right now we're a little bit like two ships crossing in the night. He is teaching this evening and we've kind of been popping back and forth as I look to end my semester and things do get a little nutty. And then I thought, wow, I'll go get our son and he can welcome you into the episode. And wouldn't that be fun to celebrate 150 episodes? So I went outside and apparently he is just sleeping up a storm, super tired. So it's me. It's me. But actually, I'm I'm quote unquote joined by many former podcast guests and members of the Teaching in Higher Ed community. We're not recording this live, but I do have recordings from them of things that they wanted to recommend to you, the listening audience. So let's get started first off with this recommendation from James Lang, who's been on the show a couple of times now. And most recently, he interviewed Ken Bain, the author of What the Best College Teachers Do. And James Lang is uh, author of most recently Small Teaching. Here we go, James. Take it away with your recommendation. Hi, Bonnie. Congratulations on the 150th episode of the Teaching in Higher Ed podcast. It's been a really wonderful community that you've created. Uh, for many of us in higher education, and I know personally, I have learned so much from all the experts that you have had on the show, and actually introduced me to a lot of people whose work uh, I never would have heard of otherwise. So thanks for putting together this wonderful resource. And the recommendation I always make first and foremost to people about teaching and learning in higher education is Ken Bain's What the Best College Teachers Do. For me, it still remains the gold standard book on higher education which combines uh, Ken's long-term study of really effective college teachers with research on how people learn. And putting those two sort of lines of research together kind of led Ken to some conclusions, which I think can be really profound for faculty members to consider and really help them think about the kinds of learning environments that they want to create for their students. So uh, my recommendation is what the best college teachers do, and congratulations once again. It's so fun for me to look back on these past almost three years and think about having read what the best college teachers do such a long time ago when I first started my teaching career in higher ed back 13, 14 years ago. And just to imagine that I was able to be connected with Ken Bain and have him on the show a few times. He's such a generous person, and yet he's just a legacy person, too, with what he has given us over all of these years. And what a great recommendation. Thanks so much, James, for recommending that book. I also join you in that recommendation. And it's so fun to be connected with Ken Bain and have had him on the show in the past as well. A person who I have not been too much connected with, but was really excited to get her message is our next recommendation. And I'll talk a little bit more about her because I've been getting lost in a good way in all the resources that she has. But let me let me move on to our next recommendation from Beth. Hi, Bonnie. My name is Beth Kugler-Blom, and I live in Victoria, British Columbia. I'd like to recommend the Learning How to Learn course from Coursera with the wonderful Barbara Oakley. I took this course last fall on my own through Coursera, mostly from my iPhone, and I just loved it. There's a lot of new research being drawn into that course about how our brains work and how we can design to help people learn. So I thought you'd enjoy it. You may have already heard about it. Happy 150th episode. I've been really enjoying listening to your podcast recently. All the best. 
Beth, it is so nice to be connected with you. And one of the fortuitous things I'm so glad that I saw on your blog is actually something I would like to take a moment and recommend. And that is to check out your posts on your experiments with Facebook Live. You wrote a couple of blog posts about that. And I love that you just experimented and dove right in. I watched your Facebook Live video and you were so authentic. You were credible. And yet at the same time, when you had a little trouble figuring out where the comments were and things like that, you just didn't show any sort of awkward nervousness. Instead, it was like a playful person who's experimenting with something that you could find use with in your work and in your teaching. And I just love that you modeled that for us. And I'm actually going to be doing my first Facebook live video, not necessarily related specifically to the podcast, but with my students. I'm teaching consumer behavior this semester. And I have decided that on April the 19th, which will be before this will have aired. So I maybe I'll even have a link to post in the show notes, who knows by the time it comes to that. But the students I've blogged about this before are doing poster sessions again. And I thought what a nice addition to be able to welcome in some alumni and other business professionals who may not be able to show up to the event, but might like to interact in that way. So I have a couple of students who will be our hosts for my first Facebook live event. And it was really fun to come across Beth's posts about her experimentation with it as well. And you've really inspired me to do something specific to the podcast after I experiment I feel like I'll be ready to go (laughs) and give it a whirl. And I appreciated you reduced my nervousness about it, that whole feeling of what if no one shows up and what's it going to be like? I think you just kind of have to dive in and really go for it. And live video is becoming so popular and a really good way to get some participation with one's audience. So thank you for that encouragement. And Beth wrote a really kind post about the podcast Well, she recommended actually a couple of podcasts and down at the bottom, she said she had recently discovered teaching in higher ed. And one of the things she said, which I really, really liked was that I seem like the kind of person that she'd like to have coffee with. I do have a little bit of bad news. I do not drink coffee. Can't stand it at all. Really, really, really don't like it. But iced tea is my thing. So hopefully someday Beth will be able to sit down with iced tea and coffee in hand and really connect. You seem like someone I'd like to have iced tea with. (laughs) So there you go. Thank you so much for the recommendation, Beth. And I'm so glad to be connected with you. I've subscribed to your blog post, so I'll be able to read those inside of my RSS reader. I really appreciate being connected. And it looks like a great course that you recommended, Coursera's Learning How to Learn. And I'll definitely check that out as well. Our next recommendation is coming from a former guest and someone I am so pleased to be connected with. Not only was she a wonderful resource in terms of when she was on the podcast in the past, but she just continues to be so. And so here is a recommendation from Isepo. Hi, Bonnie. This is Isepo Iqbal calling from Vancouver, British Columbia. And my recommendation is a website called Fitness Blender. I love exercising and it's part of my daily routine, but I can't always get to the gym. And sometimes it's raining so hard that I just don't want to go for a run. So Fitness Blender is great for me. It's got a whole bunch of programs. You can, as someone who um, is going to the site, you can determine how long you want to work out for, which body parts you want to work out, um, whether it's cardio or not, whether you have equipment or not, and what intensity you want to work out at. So I personally love this site. And an added bonus is that if you sign up, like if you create an account, you don't get endless emails from Fitness Blender. And I really like that as well because I suffer from email overload and it's all free. That's it for my recommendation. And thanks for um, your amazing show. Bye-bye. Thank you for all of your contributions to the community. And for this one, it looks like a great way that we can keep active and it looks like a terrific resource. So another thing for me to check out, I have lots of to do to follow up after all of these great recommendations. And I just so enjoy being in community with you. Thanks once again for the recommendation. 
Next up, we have Linda Oakleaf, who is an active member of the Teaching in Higher Ed Slack group. And I told her how fun it was to actually hear her voice because I get to see so much of what she has to say and have truly enjoyed getting to know her in the community. But I'm just excited to now have a voice to go with the profile picture and with the so many contributions that she's made in the community. Here we go from Linda. My name is Linda Oakleaf. And I teach at Missouri Western State University in our Recreation and Sport Management program. My recommendation is a little, um, maybe not so intuitive. It's a book about teaching, but it's not about teaching in terms of pedagogy or even technique, but it's the Idiot's Guide to College Teaching. Now, it's out of print. You can still find it on Amazon used. But it is in terms of housekeeping and making sure you don't forget details and helping you sort of just go through the nitty gritty of the teaching experience. Totally recommend it, especially for new teachers who aren't in the routine. I found it, somebody bought it for me as a joke, but I found it useful and I think that you all would find it useful too. Oh, Linda, it's such a bummer when books like this that you've come to really value go out of print. I think I grabbed the right one for the show notes, and that would be not the Idiot's Guide, but the Complete Idiot's Guide to College Teaching. (laughs) Let me know if I grabbed the wrong one, though, and I will correct that. There weren't any others that I saw that, that I could choose from, so I'm pretty sure this is the one that you were referencing. And isn't that great when something starts out as a joke and then turns out to actually be totally valuable to you? I so appreciate you, Linda. I've really enjoyed getting to know you and am really, truly grateful that we get to be in community with one another. Next up, we have a recommendation from Stephen Michaels. He's been a guest on the podcast previously and challenges my brain in lots of topics, including his topic of the episode he was on, which was thinking outside the LMS. Here is today's recommendation for episode number 150 from Stephen Michaels. Hi, Bonnie. It's Stephen Michaels from episode 140. Congratulations on 150 episodes. I think I can speak for all of your listeners when I say uh, thank you so much for all that you do for our community uh, and producing one of the best podcasts on higher ed. Also, my recommendations are for the Slack team that you put together. I'm very much enjoying the community that we have there and it'd be nice to have some new blood join us. Uh, Also, my other recommendation is for the public domain review. It's an online journal that specializes in works that are in the public domain. They have great little essays that correspond to them. So if you're interested or anybody's interested in adding some things that are in the public domain to your syllabi, this would be a great place to start. You can find them at publicdomainreview.org. Once again, Bonnie, thanks a lot. Looking forward to the next 150. Thanks for that recommendation, Stephen. I've never heard of the public domain review before now, and I'm excited to check it out. Our last recommendation from a former guest, at least, comes from Ken Bain. And as we mentioned earlier, Ken Bain is the author of What the Best College Teachers Do and has been someone I have learned so much from just being able to read his books and being exposed to him now as a former guest on the podcast. Really treasure him. And here is the recommendation from Ken. Congratulations, Bonnie. It's been a wonderful series that is just... uh help to continue to transform the higher education and, and our thoughts about teaching and learning. You brought so many wonderful ideas and people into the conversation. It's just been enormously stimulating. I've got a very uh, straightforward recommendation, and it's James Lang's new book, Small Teaching. Uh, in that book, what he uh, concentrates on are the little things that we can do that can make a huge difference in uh, the learning of our students. And we always need, of course, to be focused upon that learning of our students rather than upon our teaching performance uh, per se. But small teaching is just a gold mine of research-based ideas and practices that can individually and collectively uh, create a, a, a new kind of learning environment that is going to be much more stimulating to students. So my very strong recommendation is Small Teaching by James Lang from Jossie Bass. As I 
put an end to this episode of Teaching in Higher Ed, I have a couple of recommendations I want to make. One of them might sound self-serving at first, but I do promise it comes from a place in my heart of just wanting to grow this community even more. And that is to recommend that you now, finally, after 150 episodes, leave a review for the Teaching in Higher Ed podcast on whatever service it is you use to listen to the show. You could do this because right around the time when this episode is airing is going to be the day when I will celebrate my birthday. And also on that same day, I'm going to celebrate my anniversary. Yeah, it happened on the same day. It just worked out that way. <laughs> so would be great if you could celebrate that, celebrate 150 episodes, celebrate my birthday, celebrate Dave and my anniversary, whatever reason it is you want to use to go leave that review. What that does is it moves us up in the algorithms of how iTunes recommends different kinds of podcasts. And that would be a great way to just increase our exposure. If it all happens at the same time, then there's this flurry and then people start thinking, hey, something might be happening here. And we might be able to capture people who don't otherwise know about the podcast. And last, I'd like to recommend a service that I set up to collect these recommendations. I've kind of been putting it off for a while, and it's called SpeakPipe. And SpeakPipe has a free account. You only get 20 messages per month. It's almost like a like a online voicemail system where people can leave you a voicemail, but on a web page. So if they're on a laptop that has a microphone or a computer that has a microphone, they just press the record button and they are off and running. The free account also has a maximum duration of less than 90 seconds, but I actually find that to be helpful in terms of when you're working with audio, it is good to have shorter messages. And so I don't see that as too much of a detractor of the free plan. It does have paid plans as well, but we always have to watch out for how many subscription plans we have joined. At least I know we do in our family. <laughs> One of the things I was able to discover as I was seeking out recommendations for this episode was that you're able to reply back and forth with someone. And Isipo posted a message to me and then I got to reply back to her and then she replied back to me. It's just fun how you can interact in that way. I don't ever recommend anything for the podcast if it's a book that I haven't read myself or a service that I haven't used myself. And that's why I'm recommending SpeakPipe. But I will say <laughs> that while I was looking up SpeakPipe and starting to think about it, I was wondering, I was, I was looking at the free plan and, and just is that too limiting for people with 20 messages a month? Is there something better? And I remembered about a service called VoiceThread. And some of you may have used VoiceThread previously. And VoiceThread is similar to SpeakPipe in that you can leave messages, but boy, oh my goodness, since it started and I last was familiar with it, it has added in a lot of features, including the ability to post videos, voice, and have text commenting. And they say their tagline is transforming media into collaborative spaces with video, voice, and text commenting. So while this is not an official recommendation because I haven't tried the service yet myself, I'm going to put it under the resources section of the show notes instead of under the recommendations segment of the show notes. Of course, this is totally going to mess me up because this entire episode is all recommendations. But I guess what I would recommend that you do is go take a look at VoiceThread if you haven't seen it in a while, or you haven't heard of it. There are a lot of powerful things that it can do, and I'm certainly going to be checking it out. If any of you use VoiceThread in your teaching, I would love to hear from you and see if it's something that you would recommend back over to me. Thank you so much for listening today. And remember that one of my recommendations was that you go leave a review for the show so I don't have to do that in our closing piece today like I normally do, but I do also want to remind you that if you have yet to subscribe to these weekly emails that go out, I'm not going to bombard you with a bunch of emails, but what I will do is just a single time each week, we'll send out an email that sends out my most recent blog post about either teaching or productivity. And along with that come the most current episodes show notes with all the links to the things that we talked about. So for today's episode, you would get to hear about the recommendations from James, Beth, Isabo, Linda, Stephen, and Ken Bain, all in one spot to be able to click away and go check out those resources. You can subscribe at teachinginhighered.com slash subscribe. 
And if you have yet to ever get in touch with me and give me ideas for future episodes or, or just let me know how you're experiencing the show, you can always get in touch at teachinginhighered.com slash feedback. Or even better yet, on Twitter, I'm Bonnie without an E, B-O-N-N-I, 208. I would love to be connected with you there. Take care and thanks for listening. 